you've got or are seriously looking at one of the L-Mount Alliance cameras and you need a portrait lens, something that is a classic length, nothing wrong with making portraits at 35 or 50 millimeters, I get it, but a classic portrait length is about 80 millimeters to 120 millimeters. Well, today, if you're looking for a prime, there is really only one option on the market other than the Leica F2 at 90 millimeters and it's a... So, Sigma has just come out with an 85 millimeter f1.4 art lens for the L mount cameras. We're gonna talk about that next. When you get the 85 1.4 from Sigma, you first notice that this box is pretty heavy. The second thing you may notice, certainly if you live in Canada, is this, a seven year warranty, which is amazing, and I hope to have that in your region of the world. Um, we open up the box and we've got a very heavily padded case. Also in the box is a shoulder strap because the very heavily padded case is very heavy because there's a very heavy lens inside. There's also an instruction manual, which is giant. When you go th and open up the case, which is lovely and heavily padded, we have the behemoth lens. And we have the pedal lens hood. As you know, not a fan of pedal lens hoods, but I will say that with this lens, when you put it on, it just goes and locks in place. And in fact, there's even visual verification because you can see that the lens hood lines up with the lens. There's little gray lines there, I don't know if you can see it. But when they're lined up, that means you've got the uh, pedal hood on properly. Let's run through this lens from back to front real quick. There is a rear cap. There is a rubber gasket here uh, where the lens mounts to the camera, which is what allows it to be dust and splash proof. All metal body, uh, which is gorgeous, I might add. Autofocus manual focus switch, which requires work to switch. So you're not gonna knock that by mistake. The focus ring, beautifully damped, maybe a touch on the stiff side. But again, that's not necessarily a bad thing and you're not gonna nudge this by mistake and put your shot out of focus. Giant lens cap on the front, as you might expect. And for comparison, I wanted to show you the 85 1.2 from Canon, which has been around forever. And you can kind of see, if I try and line that up, try and make this fair, that there's quite a bit of difference in the size of these front elements. The Sigma is about half an inch wider and yet lets in a third of a stop less light, which is kind of curious. Um, this is a giant lens element here. 86 millimeters is the diameter. So if you were to put a neutral density filter or a circular polarizer on here, that'd be fantastic. With a piece of glass like this, don't use a UV filter. Just don't, that's the stupidest. <laughs> Just don't do it. I wanna walk you through an autofocus continuous test with video and it was suggested last time I get some people walking around, which is great. So I set up this test in my backyard like this. I set up the camera on the tripod and then across the cedar fence, I had a subject move from right to left and then from left to right. That second path was kind of 45 degrees towards and past the camera and then back. And the third path was directly towards the camera, right out of the frame, and then back. I did a number of tests and I played with the autofocus speed and sensitivity on the S1 camera. If you've never played with these things, that really does change the way the camera responds. And so here's the first test. Path one, where our subject walks from left to right and turns around and goes right to left. Now this is with the body and face tracking and it works really well for path number one. In fact, I would say it worked well for most of the testing that I did. 
Here's path two at 45 degrees, and the S1 with the native lens keeps our subject in focus. Uh, in fact, it's quite sharp all the way through, and that works fine as well. Path three, this is where the Sigma lens really struggled, but with the native lens, you can see the wispy hairs around his face are certainly sharp right until he gets very close to the camera. And then when he comes back into the frame, it takes a moment for it to catch him, and then it follows him right back into the corner. Now with the Sigma lens, and this time at f2.8, I did a lot of testing, a lot of testing, dozens and dozens of tests. And going right to left and left to right seemed to work okay, but path two, you can see my poor subject is getting bored. Uh, with path two, it really doesn't hold focus. And it was like the lens just couldn't quite keep up with it. I will note that he was framed with the yellow uh, box showing that the camera was tracking him just fine. Yep. Same here, his face was in the box and it followed him just fine. And when he comes back, his whole body is framed, but you can see the lens does not keep up with him although he was walking you know, at a decent speed. When I use focus, I tend to use the linear setting. I set the focus ring on the camera usually to either 90 or 120 degrees. And then I make sure that the focus ring is set to linear and I manage it that way. Here's the autofocus speed test with the Sigma 85mm f1.4, which is a legacy art lens, uh, which has just kind of been retrofitted to work with the L-mount cameras. And I think the focusing speed kind of shows here. I've set the camera so that when I double tap on the screen, the camera focuses right away, beeps to let us know it's achieved focus, and then fires off the shot. So you can see this is relatively quick, if not perfect. Here's the Sigma 85, uh, this time set to f4. It's the same test, I'm tapping on the screen and you can see how quickly it achieves focus. By comparison, here's the native Panasonic 24-105 lens at f4 doing that same test, setting it to 85 millimeters. Okay, good. And then you can kind of see how quickly this focuses. Here's the Canon 85 millimeter with the MC21 adapter. And same test, same settings, haven't changed anything from what you just saw with the native lens, um, but you'll obviously see the speed difference. Here's an example of shooting uh, wide open at f1.4. The, the depth of field is really, really shallow. Here you can see the background at f11 and f8 all the way up to f1.4, and you can see that while the depth of field gets shallower and shallower and shallower, the background completely disappears. Here's an example of the star pattern you'll see when the lens is closed down to f16. Here's some images from a shoot I did with a model I know, Tanya, who I've worked with for years. And we shot in my backyard in the dark, well after the sun was down. And the only light was from those two flashes when they were flashing. You can see incredible detail. Look at the detail in the legs of this mosquito in that shot. That 
really is amazing, and yet the background is completely blown out. There's also an example of Moiré, which is easily managed, you can see there, with post-production tools. An example of a shoot I did recently for a magazine, the interview with the director of Sloan T. If you want a creamy background, F1.4 is fantastic for that. And so there's the teapot, and there's the director, Hoda, being interviewed. And she was quite animated, and F1.4 served us well. But we had to stop up to 3.5 to get two people in the frame sharp. The Sigma 85mm f1.4 art lens for the L-mount cameras really is a lovely lens. It is big, it is heavy, but it's beautifully constructed, it's weather sealed, and I can see I'm going to be happy with this lens for a lot of years to come. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up. If you've got a comment or a question, drop it down below and I'll try and answer it for you. And if you'd like to subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so that you can be notified the next time I put out a video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.